So let's talk about some techniques of differentiation. To this point, anytime we were trying to find the derivative f prime of x, we had to take the limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. And so what we were doing is, just graphically, let's look at this. If we had a point one here and a point two here, if we found the average rate of change, we would find the slope of this line, okay? That's when we did f of b minus f of a over b minus a. And that's our secant line, slope. But if we want to find the rate of change at say just at this first point. So we want to find the instantaneous rate of change at that point. What we have to do is recognize that the distance between these two points is h. So the first point occurs at x and the second point occurs at x plus h. And then the y value or the function value would be f of x and f of x plus h. So it's basically the same formula. Second y, which is f of x plus h, minus the first y, f of x, over second x minus first x. We end up with f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Now that would just give us the slope of the secant line between uh, x and x plus h. But if we move this first point back this way, in other words, we are let h go to zero and we take the limit as h goes to zero of that difference quotient, we will end up with the slope of the tangent line eventually, okay? So once h is at zero, these two points are really residing at exactly the same place. So that's the instantaneous rate of change. So at this point, to find the slope of the tangent or the instantaneous rate of change, this limit has been the only way we've been able to do that. Now, over time, different techniques for derivatives were developed. And here's the first one that you need to know, and it's called the power rule, and it saves us a lot of time. Okay, so the power rule says, if you have f of x equals x to the p, okay, where x is your base and p is your power, f prime of x is the power times the base to the power minus 1. Okay? So if f of x is x cubed, f prime of x is 3x to the 3 minus 1, or simply 3x squared. Now, we would get the same thing if we did this difference quotient limit. But we do have this power rule that's going to help us speed up this process. It's a very important rule. Now, if you have a constant in front of your power, so let's say we have f of x is cx to the p. Well, the rule is basically the same. You'll have c times p, x to the p minus 1. So that's our second power rule. So if we have something like f of x is 6x squared, we'll have f prime of x is 6 times 2, x to the 2 minus 1, or 12x to the 1. If f of x is just x, 
f prime of x would be, remember there's a 1 here and a 1 here, so it would be 1 times 1 x to the 1 minus 1, that would be 1 x to the 0, that would be 1 times 1, which is 1. So another thing to know is that if f of x is x, f prime of x is 1. If we have f of x equals a constant, like 3, well, well, remember, this would be like 3x to the 0. So f prime of x would be 3 times 0, x to the 0 minus 1. Well, that's going to be 0, x to the negative. Well, that's going to be 0. So... If f of x is c, a constant, f prime of x is 0. Anytime you have a constant, then f prime of x is going to be 0. And I guess the last one, let's see, if we have f of x is 5x, then f prime of x is going to, remember there's a 1, it's going to be 5 times 1, x to the 1 minus 1 is 5x to the 0 is 5 times 1 is 5. So that rule says if f of x is c x to the 1, just a constant, it's the same rule. But f prime of x turns out to just be the coefficient or the constant. So we can apply these to all kinds of exponents. So this will be true if your exponent is an integer. So here are the kinds of exponents we'll see. Integers. Those are like negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1. To etc. can be a fraction. Can't write them all out, but you know, a half, two thirds, negative, six fifths, any kind of a fraction. So we're going to do some fraction arithmetic. And of course, it can also be a decimal 0 0.1, negative 0.2, etc. Okay, so we can have all kinds of exponents. And we also will have radicals. And when we have a radical, okay. We need to write our radicals with fractional exponents. So just as a quick reminder, the square root of x can be written x to the 1 half. And that's the one you'll see most often is the square root. But if you had a cube root, you could write that x to the 1 third. If you had a fifth root, etc., it would be x to the one-fifth. So we'll run into some of these different kinds of exponents as we apply the power rule, power meaning exponent. So example number one, find the derivative of the function y equals x cubed minus x squared over 68 plus 63x plus four. And now we see for the first time this notation dy dx. Well, y is the name of the function, and x is the variable in the function, and all this says is we're going to take the derivative of y with respect to x, but there's a d on the top and the bottom, okay? All right, so all this is is a power rule. So we'll write dy dx is 3x to the 3 minus 1, and of course, eventually, you're just going to say 2, but in your head, every time, you need to say, reduce the power by 1, minus 2x to the 2 minus 1 over 68, plus 63 times 1x to the 1 minus 1, plus 0. We'll just say a constant has a derivative of 0. Think about it. Derivative means change, and a constant is a number that never changes.
That's why we call it a constant. So just cleaning up a little bit, dy dx is 3x squared minus, now I'm going to reduce my fraction, 2 into 68 is going to give me a 34 denominator. So that's going to be x over 34. You could also write that minus 1 34th x, but most of the time we would just write x over 34 plus 63. Because, look, 1x to the 0 is 1 times 1, which is 1. And 63 times 1 is 63. So our final answer for, for example number 1 is dy dx is 3x squared minus x over 34 plus 63. Example 2, find the derivative of the function f of u, where f of u equals 9u to the 0 0.4 minus 6u to the 3.6. So f prime of u will be 9 times 0 0.4, u to the 0 0.4 minus 1, minus 6 times 3.6, u to the 3.6 minus 1. So 9 times 0.4, just do it on your calculator, 3.6, u to the negative 0 0.6, again, use your calculator if you need to, minus 21.6, u to the 2.6. Now the only thing we might do here, which may or may not be required by my math lab, you can try it both ways, but a negative exponent in the numerator as a factor, something that's being multiplied, can be moved to the denominator to become a positive exponent. So 3.6 over u to the 0 0.6 minus 21.6 u to the 2.6 is our final answer. Example 3. Find the derivative of the function. y equals 8 times the square root of x plus 3x to the 6 sevenths. Well, here, the first thing we have to remember is the square root of x is going to be written x to the 1 half power. So y, without taking the derivative, is 8x to the 1 half power plus 3x to the 6 sevenths power. So dy dx, that is the derivative of y with respect to x, is 8 times a half x to the 1 half minus 1 plus 3 times 6 sevenths x to the 6 sevenths minus 1. So 8 times a half is 4. A half minus 1 is negative a half. Plus, here, I'm going to just multiply 3 times 6, 18 over 7 x to the negative 1 seventh. If you have 6 over 7 minus 7 over 7, that's what 1 is, 7 over 7, right? Is negative 1 seventh. And so I could rewrite this, and again, my math lab may take the negative exponents, but without negative exponents, it would be 4 over x to the 1 half plus 18 sevenths x to the 1 seventh. And both of those fractions are negative, so they both will end up in denominators. Example number four. Find the derivative of the function y equals 2 over x cubed minus 7 over x. Our power rule is for bases in the numerator, like x to the p. It's not a base in a denominator. So we're going to rewrite this with negative exponents. So we're going to move it from the denominator to the numerator and make it a negative exponent. 
and then that's going to be 7x to the minus 1. So with negative exponents, y is 2x to the negative 3 minus 7x to the negative 1. Now we can use our power rule. 2 times negative 3, since it's negative, I'll use parentheses to indicate the multiplication. x to the, be careful here, negative 3 minus 1 is going to be negative 4. Minus 7 times negative 1 x to the minus 1 minus 1. So this is going to be negative 6 x to the negative 4 plus 7 x to the negative 2. So with positive exponents, negative 6 over x to the 4th plus 7 over x to the 2nd. That's our final answer. Example number five, find the derivative of the function y equals x to the fifth plus three divided by x squared. So we're going to rewrite this as individual terms by writing each term over the common denominator. I'm going to do a little reducing then. This is going to be x to the third because we subtract our exponents. And then I'm going to write this one with a negative exponent. And now both of those fit our power rule. y equals cx to the p. Okay, where you have a coefficient. Remember y prime, coefficient, times the power, times x to the power minus 1. So it's 3x to the 3 minus 1 plus 3 times negative 2 x to the negative 2 minus 1. So that's 3x to the 2 minus 6x to the negative 3. And I'm going to write my final answer as 3x to the second minus 6 over x cubed.